ECG labeling game, uh, we added uh, an option to add noise. You can uh, add uh, by default, there's like um, some minimal amount of noise. If you move the slider all the way to the right, you get a lot of noise that the QRS uh, complex is barely visible. And in this case, we expect the bot to start uh, making more mistakes. I wouldn't know which one, which one is it. The bot seems to be struggling as well. Yeah, it's creating all these uh, false uh, alarms. That's because it keeps uh, clicking on everything. So I wouldn't know which one of those waveforms is an actually normal um, ECG waveform. The abnormality score remains 0.73. So it's labeling everything as abnormal. So it keeps essentially clicking on everything if it was a human doing the, the task. And uh, when there is a hit, it uh, clicked correctly on abnormal a waveform when it's a false alarm this means this is a normal waveform that's just how it looks like yes a human won't be able to recognize it but the bot is not able to recognize it either so but once we start reducing the noise level let's say put it uh, half way got another false alarm i can barely tell still a uh, for a human it will still be above a threshold in terms of being able to detect if this uh, waveform is normal or not yeah it keeps uh, making mistakes okay if we reduce noise entirely this would be a normal and it says abnormal I don't know why hopefully next time it gets the same waveform it gets it correct yeah, this is wrong again, but the number is reducing. It's 0.51. Okay, it's not uh, doing very well, is it? Yeah, I would expect this uh, number to go uh, lower over over time. There's something to do with the thresholds. So we're seeing something like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Uh, last time for a uh, normal ECG but we don't get that anymore it's a bit unusual we can start it over again see how it does yeah we expect that point point five one for a normal ECG to be slightly lower to be well below point 0.5 for sure so let's start again we have this minimal noise on the ECG waveform we get point 0.7 for abnormal wave and 0.7 for a normal one so we still get a false alarm for it yeah, it's really not doing well with the noise 0.7 yeah I keep getting false alarms so essentially labeling normal a uh, waveform as abnormal that's no good I don't know if it will go any lower I assume this is the noise throwing it out, throwing the algorithm off. I have to check, probably without any noise at all. Yeah, we get a very high number for normal ECG, so it's labeling it as uh, abnormal. Okay, so we get 0.59 for this one, which is obviously abnormal, and that's uh, labeling it correctly. 0.8 for that one, which is missing a negative peak, which is fine. 0.7 for this one that is missing the first uh, positive peak we get a 0.51 now for a normal uh, waveform but it's not low enough to be labeled correctly by the algorithm i suspect it would be something like the thresholds might uh, not be correcting themselves uh, so they like saturated at something so we popped all this code 
into GPT-4. Let's break it down into two parts, individual code file review and the integration. Yeah, I'm more worried about the integration, but let's go over it uh, one by one. Yeah, we might later add uh, actually more uh, uh, waveform, waveform types. Those are generated in JavaScript. It's probably important to note that um, the waveforms are only generated in uh, JavaScript, whereas the fuzzy logic, the bot, is uh, working in the uh, background, so in the backend. So they so the bot uh, cannot possibly cheat because it's only seeing the raw data. It doesn't know how the data was generated. So it doesn't have the labels for which uh, signal is what. Currently, we still have trouble with this 0.51 value, which is too high. It should be at least uh, below 0.5 for the abnormality score or the decision to be correctly say normal for a normal ECG wave. We, we can artificially correct it, but uh, um, yeah, we don't want magic numbers. We want a, like a permanent solution for this. Okay, can we do some rapid fire quick responses? Uh, can you look at the whole code? Give a quick summary of how the fuzzy logic algorithm is making its uh, decisions. Could you primarily focus on how a normal ECG waveform is being detected? The reason I'm asking is that for a normal ECG waveform, I'm getting an abnormality score that seemed to be slightly too high. How can we fix this? Let's actually grab the number. A 0.8 abnormality score for this, which is fine. It looks almost normal, but it doesn't have uh, any negative peaks. That's why the score is elevated. That's okay. This is the abnormality score that I get for a normal ECG waveform. There could be an issue with the range of uh, values. So the problem is that they don't go low enough. Are they meant to be between 0 and 1? Okay, we don't want to be like tweaking them. I know most people with uh, machine learning algorithms just keep uh, tweaking everything. The rules meant to just make sense. Okay, so regards the solution, can you actually look at the code provided? Uh, look at the membership functions and yes, suggest how to refine the functions to reduce overlap. I thought there should be a consistent level of uh, overlap. Uh, we would like to make uh, sure the output, the what's called the abnormality score, goes all the way to zero or close to zero. Regards the rules. Uh, can you check if we are currently using any weights? I don't think so. Generally, yes, we would like some parameters to have less uh, weight. So, for example, it will make uh, sense to have less weight to the amplitude and more weight to the number of positive and negative peaks. Uh, the frequency should also be lower the uh, weight. Now regards normalization ranges, yes we would like to check if the normalization process for your input variables ensure the global mix max values are set correctly. Okay, so we actually setting them to NANs to begin with, to not available. This was uh, working better. 
would you suggest changing them? There would be some uh, common uh, values that we expect that we could be using instead. This uh, seems to make a lot of difference. Also, could you explain the repeatability? So, would the abnormality score be different every time we uh, run the web application? Now, for the threshold and scaling, yes, I, I suspect you are suggesting to adjust them uh, manually. We could have done so, except uh, the normal ECG abnormality score is very similar to the value for an, uh, one of the abnormal waveforms. We would like to fix that. Now, main question, the usual question, are you going to be generating the code or do you prefer to provide prompts for GitHub Copilot to use? What is, what is it we currently have for frequency? Yeah, the problem with frequency is that we only essentially have two values. Let me just down quickly. 0 0.513, 0 0.513. Let's just reload the tool so it's faster as well. Yeah, that level of noise um, should not impact the result too much. Yeah, now it's 0 0.76. And when you remove noise, expect this number, see if this number going lower, 0.513. Yeah, it's that same 0 0.513, 0 0.7775. Yeah, that's for normal. Well, at least it's behaving as expected. Yeah, I'm not sure this will necessarily help. The frequent, the problem with the frequency, we have uh, three or five, I think. Oops. Yeah, because well, it kind of makes sense because it's a single, a single waveform, a single PQRSD complex. So there's no much variability in it anyway. So I think when we have all the positive and negative peaks, I thought this number should go to five. Or is it only happening when there's no noise? So this will generate the frequency of three, which is normalized to 0.4. We want still three. There might be something wrong in terms of when the noise is added and then being removed. Um, yeah, the scaling might be doing something funny because of, ah, now it went to five. Yeah, I don't think this will do much. I don't even know why it's suggesting that. Now, rule weighting. Yeah, that will be uh, more likely to help. So, where's that? Uh, yeah, we want to do that for now. Just keep it there. This is a rule one. This rule gives more weight to peaks, count, than amplitude. Uh, that I expect to actually make a lot of difference. Let's restart this quickly. Yeah, receiver 0.8 for the first one, then 0.1. Yes, yeah, so now it's doing much better. So that suggestion helped get Copilot to explain this quickly. Condition saying that the number of positive peaks uh, is either too few or too many. And the amplitude is not high, then the rule is triggered. The operator, yes, we have or, meaning that if either conditions, then we have, and then we have, and operator, yeah, that's fine. Have to be true with the whole statement to be true. The this operator is uh, the logical not operator in the fuzzy logic gates. Why are we negating that? All ah, right, we actually changed. Yeah, we changed the rule entirely. So we have um, originally it was uh, positive peaks too few or too many, but then we're also adding and amplitude is too high. 
Yeah, we could add low as well, but this seems to be working much better. Let's see in theory when we add more. All ah, right, it's already did nine misses as it was. And now it's misbehaving. Let's see if we reduce the noise all the way to zero. Right, it's labeling this one as abnormal. We expect the uh, false alarm and f um, the red ones misses and false alarm to remain at what they are 0 and 11 and not to go any higher yet yeah, the higher this abnormality score the more abnormal the ECG waveform is right so it's doing well and then you can see how by increasing the noise the robot starts uh, making more and more mistakes so hopefully this is a useful tool to learn how as the logic can be used in uh, biomedical data signal feature detection. Yeah, we get a relatively a very low number at 0.12 for a normal ECG is what we want, and that just uh, was achieved by tweaking uh, the rules. This is normal. You get 0.12. So on the other hand, I had like a video telling how, um, you know, much better the bot is. Uh, on the other hand, if you have both uh, humans, instead of turning it into a competition, like over here, uh, we can uh, give this abnormality score to the human expert to try and uh, help the decision making. So now... In addition to looking at the waveform, I can also look at the abnormality score that the machine learning algorithm is providing. I can make a better decision. So if it's still, if, it, if this uh, abnormality score is uh, slightly uh, elevated, then, you know, I can pay more attention. So currently the bot doesn't seem to make any mistakes. The 11 misses were there when we increased the noise level. So now the real question is, there will be another very interesting thing to do, is see um, actually how human and uh, machine compare when there is noise added to the signal. So essentially when the, let's see if we add a little bit of noise so I can tell that's abnormal. It's actually harder for me to tell if something is normal. Let's see if the machine will start making mistakes. Yes, so the miss it missed one signal. Yeah, it keeps uh, doing misses. So I actually have a chance now. <laughs> so yeah, interestingly enough, when noise is being introduced to the waveform, I oops made a mistake. I'm still able to do the task, and the machine starts uh, making mistakes. This is an interesting case when now I'm actually winning, winning the machine, when the noise is uh, elevated. That's getting faster as well. Yeah, humans tend to get distracted. That doesn't help. But the bot is making a lot of mistakes. So the algorithm needs to be tweaked. Yeah, so now there is essentially the opposite problem of... Uh, okay, so now changing uh, rule 1 has uh, solved the problem when there is no noise. It's working really well. However, when there is a noise, all uh, most abnormal ECG waveforms are labeled as normal, uh, which is no good. And this is the change that was made. Well, I don't know if you mentioned this already, but the obvious problem is that when we add the uh, noise, the number of positive and negative peaks uh, shoots through the roof. And obviously that the algorithm doesn't work anymore. Now, I, I less inclined to do any filtering. I want the algorithm to see, to actually see the same a data as what the humans see so now the question is i well assuming i'm a human still able to do the 
does quite well if there is uh, some added noise to the signal. However, the machine fails already. Now the question is, how do I do that? Well, the main difference is that I don't measure the, I don't see the peaks that were generated by the noisy, uh, by the noise added to the signal as a negative or positive uh, amplitude peaks. I think it will make sense to look at when counting peaks to actually look at uh, a certain percentage of the entire waveform or for the peaks to be detected. I think we're already doing this in the code. Can you double check? Instead of looking at the specific uh, height, height of the signal when finding peaks, we're doing like a percentage. So in this case, uh, looking at the 20% of the maximum amplitude for the threshold. I think this will be more similar to what a human does. Yeah, the numbers are smaller. It's 20%. So obviously if we make the noise larger, this uh, negative and positive peaks will go, um, will become larger numbers as well. 77. Now the question is, what's a reasonable number? I would say, <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah, this is a bit of a, a make this numbers like 4%, uh, 40%. So then what will happen is, yeah, for this level of noise, it's uh, correctly finding 4, should be 3, so let's making the stakes that's 13 what it doesn't actually mean it's still finding four whereas it should be three in this case there are three which is correct and there should have been one uh, negative one that it's uh, missing it's found 51 that one that's obviously incorrect uh, that number should be and she's suggesting that noise is too much. Yeah, how's it 13? The original number minimize the noise is fine, it's still incorrect. If no noise with the original algorithm, we get two and one. That's right. We get three and one, which is correct. Instead of uh, uh, this is giving some errors. How about uh, looking at the median of the signal and taking percentage uh, of uh, that for the um, number of uh, negative and positive peaks? So essentially, we'd like to look at the baseline, find the uh, baseline, and uh, then do peaks as a percentage above the baseline try this one out so this one didn't really work just the percentage of the maximum uh, uh, level okay we might just have to finish it another time so i'll say bye bye for now and we'll keep testing don't forget to check out biochaos.com and provide your feedback very important to us